pounding of hooves had become thunderous, matching the growing storm gear they all could see up ahead. The Wessex Downs began ascending upward. Flashes pulsated in an indistinct rhythm. Gearvo could feel large drops of rain crescendo battering his arm. Reaching the hilltop, he noticed on the opposing peak a troll with a frustrated and even frightened expression. Usually, Gearvo would be ready for defense, but the troll very soon turned and walked south. Bewildered by such fortune, Gearvo directed his gaze back to the storm tightening the grasp around his hilt. Yonder was close, Gervo knew, and his adventure was only now beginning. The only time Gervo would be seen without his armor and helmet would be in the night, when the sky was dark and no light could divulge his form. After setting camp, a fire was started so Gervo could enjoy his favorite tea. Realizing he needed water to boil, Gervo set out toward a pool he had taken deliberate note of before last light. Approaching the still water, he had submerged what to be his peculiar hands into the pool feeling the cool touch of the water spirit. As he moved closer to drink, the water settled and his reflection gave Gervo a fright. The great bulbous eyes of his cursed doppelganger filled him with anxiety of his ailment once more. Burning his chest with both a fear and a desire for revenge, he thrashed with the sparkle, dousing his permeable green skin. He collected as much water as he could carry and marched his large toad feet back to camp to have his evening tea.
After a night of bothered sleep and chilling winds, Girvo set out again on his search for the kingless castle. Wanting to avoid cutting through the dark wood, he followed the tree line for the first half day. Eventually deciding there was no end in sight, he would have to make his way through the forest. Finding the first break in the thicket, he made his way inside. Deeper Girvo tread with his steed, reaching the bogs and further the marshland by high sun. A fog fell on the silent arena, with nothing save the bubbling swamps that surrounded him breaking the silence. Girvo cantered for some time before dismounting, continuing to walk cautiously with his horse, comforting her with hushed renditions of songs his mother would once sing in the spring of his life. The air, with its putrid taste, seemed to be setting a spell over Girvo, finding his legs growing abnormally weaker and his vision blackened. The fog. Girvo knew it must be the fog. Tearing enough of his tunic to fashion a scarf, he quickly set about unpacking his things, searching for something to cover his horse. Distracted and frantic, Gibo took no notice of the rising bubbles of stones throw away from where they stood. From deep in the toxic swamp grew a shadowy figure, until hissing broke the surface of boiling waste, eyeless, angry. Before Gibo could so much as reach for his sword, the creature struck down hellishly sinking Fang into the neck of his horse and dragging her silently into the contaminated waters. Girvo was in the land of the reclusive goblin, he knew. <laughs>
pounded the dirt, running the ever thinning path between gurgling quagmire. Gearvo, having lost all but his sword, would need to reach the other side of the larger wood if he was to ever find yonder, and there, whomever had cursed his appearance. From the swamp burped corrosive sludge, burning his long green toes, but Gearvo continued to sprint the distance until the trail grew wide again. From the trees leapt a great spider, spewing thick webs in an attempt to capture the night. Gervo catapulted himself with his strong toed legs, landing many paces ahead. All the while around him, he could hear the spectral laughter in language, unmistakably goblin. With a series of slashes, Gervo fought his way through the dank flora, ripping and shredding vines and branches and leaves. Thorns entangled him, but still he flailed bravely, thrusting his armoured frame through the thicket and into the sunlight. Limp, his body rolled, and coming to a stop, Gervo breathed deeply, swelling his chest, his heart pounding his breastplate. The bubbling, the hissing and rattling, and most relieving, the laughing, all became quiet, all became, all became warm. The smell of bluebells and primroses infused the gentle breeze, and Gervo was free of that place. He stayed flat to the meadow for most of the day, planning how, with losing both his horse and supplies, he would remain in pursuit of yonder. A glint in the corner of his eye drew his gaze just steps away. Givo climbed to his hands and knees and crawled towards the dazzling reflection. A dagger, a shining silver dagger. As he gripped the misericordia in hand, his hearing pricked. Voices came from the ridge below. Gervo crawled to remain hidden, spying briefly to see a dwarf arguing with an imp about bread and soup. Gervo stroked the dagger in his hand, quietly, waiting for the woman that trailed in their wake to make her way out of sight. What a beautiful dagger, Gervo thought. This will help me on my quest.